communicate on a modern TCP IP network, every computer needs a compatible IP address for that network. The IP address is composed of two portions, the network ID and the host ID. The network ID must be the same and the host ID must be unique on each TCP IP subnet. If the network IDs of two PCs in the same location are different, they cannot communicate. If the host IDs of two PCs in the same location are the same, it creates an IP conflict and they cannot communicate. To uncomplicate this situation, DHCP exists on networks to allow Linux, Windows, and Mac hosts to obtain compatible IPs to communicate on their TCP IP networks. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it is a server service whereby a Linux or Windows client obtains an IP address from first booting up on a network. This happens via a process between a client and server known as the four-step DHCP handshake process. The first part of this process is known as the DHCP Discover Broadcast. The client boots up, does not have a compatible IP, does not know the network portion of the address or the subnet it's on, nor does it know whether it would create an IP conflict if it were to assign itself a host portion. Therefore, its only choice is to broadcast, a very inefficient means of communication on the network akin to shouting in an open room. A DHCP server will hear this broadcast and then respond with a DHCP offer. It looks in its database, finds an available IP address with a compatible network address and a unique host ID, and offers it to the client. The client then receiving this will make a DHCP request. And then finally, at the end of the process says, the server will send back to the client a DHCP acknowledge packet with the lease and expiration information of that particular IP address. To the casual observer, this entire process is unseen. For them, connecting to a network appears to be something like plugging in a lamp. Client desktops, laptops, and portable network devices that change location frequently are great candidates for DHCP. These clients move around frequently, and configuring their IP addresses manually each time they change networks would be a continuous hassle. However, servers should always utilize a static or manually configured IP address. Unlike clients, we do not want their IPs to change dynamically via DHCP. Servers do not move around. We want their IP addresses to remain the same. If they change, other devices that depend on them may be unable to find them on the network. Servers are mission critical. Making them dependent on a DHCP server increases the chance that they will lose connectivity with clients and is an unnecessary risk as a single point of failure. Some of the command line tools we'll be using today are ifconfig, which can get and set IP address information, the ping command, which can test communication between two PCs IP addresses, dhclient, which can release and renew IP addresses from a DHCP server, if down, which can bring an interface down if the configuration file has been modified. If up, which can bring an interface up to reflect changes made to a configuration file. Some of the configuration files we'll be looking at today are Etsy network interfaces, which determines whether or not an interface is static or configured via DHCP. If it is static, it holds the static IP information. Etsy resolve comp, which holds the IP addresses of DNS name servers. Etsy hosts, which holds host to IP mappings, and Etsy hostname, which would hold the client's hostname. There's a couple of issues if we're going to configure a static IP. It depends on how your system's set up. On my desktop, um, I didn't have this. I wasn't actually, and I don't have a wireless card, I just have a cable connection. I, d I didn't really have an issue of, w with this on my desktop. However, on, on my laptop, I have two network connections. There's a cable connection, there's also a wireless. And if you have the Genome uh, you know, net Network Manager uh, set up and running, it will interfere with the older text-based way of configuring networking. And they, you know, there's, there's sort of a, it's, it's kind of buggy. So in other words, you might set it up for a static IP, and it'll still try to hold on to a dynamic IP and, and vice versa. To switch from a dynamic IP to a static one, first uninstall Network Manager and Network Manager GNOME. This tool has current incompatibilities with what we want to do. To do this, use the command sudo apt get purge Network Manager Network Manager GNOME. 
So what you first want to do is, from a fresh boot or a clean slate, is just, if you're going to go to a from static IP, temporarily uninstall, so I'm going to sudo apt-get, and I'll say purge or remove, I'm going to do network manager, and the applet part of it, which is network manager, and let me go genome. Okay, and of course you'll have to supply the root password or you know for sudo, and it'll let me know. Hey, you sure you want to do this? And yes, I'll do it. This will fundamentally change the way you do networking. Once this is done, this will no longer be available to you for you know switching between connections and things. Again, if you're on a server, you may not even see this at all. You, so you may not have to worry about this step, but if if you do have that applet set up and installed, you will want to uninstall it before you try to use this method to, to switch back and forth between static and dynamic IPs. Okay, so now that's uninstalled, and I've verified it because I know that Network Manager is not running now. And What I want to do is, there's a, just a few things I need to change. So I'm going to go into my etc and network folder. And what I do is, I keep a couple of files here. Um, and right now, um, by default, this is what you're going to see. Excuse me. Yeah, this is what you're going to see. This is sort of the default installation with Ubuntu 10.10 or Maverick Meerkat. What I've done is um, I've created a, a DHCP. This is sort of a backup of that. It's really just the same thing. Um, and then I, I keep my static IPs here. So if I were to um, these are my static settings. And whenever I want to change it, you know, I can simply disable the network manager and I can just take this and copy it to interfaces and that'll put all my settings in without having to do this every single time but but I'm gonna do it the long way just you know because this may be your first time I assume if you're watching this tutorial just so you can kind of see what I did so I'm gonna do sudo and nano and I, the file that I want to edit is gonna be interfaces and when I do that this is sort of the default you know, this is what you would see are sort of the default um, settings after you've installed, or right after you've installed Ubuntu 10.10, Maver Meerkat. And what you're going to want to change is, you don't really need this setting, it's just a loopback, but I'm going to do ETH1, and it depends. Now, look, I'm ETH1, you might be ETH something else. You could be ETH0 or ETH2, but if you're not sure, I can use the fconfig command. And let me go up here. I'm see I'm ETH1. So that's what I want to set up here. And I'm going to just go over here and again. And then I want iFace, ETH1, INET. I want to set this to static. Not automatic, not loopback, but static. So auto ETH1 to bring it up automatically. We want to power it up. iFace uh, activate it. ETH1, INET static to tell, you know, a bunch of, hey, this, I'm, I'm going to specify a static IP address. I don't want you to get an IP address from a DHCP server. 199.207.13.1. Now remember that this is the network portion and this is the host portion. And that's my gateway, but I'm, I'm going to actually give it one, I'm going to do 45 here because I know that pretty much anything over 30 is not going to be, you know, it's going to be available on this network. Your settings may be different and there are many tutorials dealing with IP addressing and subnetting. Um, I posted four or five and many other people have posted them, so you know, it's well worth your time if you put some effort into it and learn how IP addressing and subnetting work, because these you know these settings will need to be compatible to set up a static IP um, address. And let me go to NetMask, and let me go to the broadcast address um, 255.255.255.0, and the the NetMask here. 